What's going on, everybody? Now I'm playing. There's a fucking glare right now with these glasses, but what's going on, everybody? How you doing tonight? We got a brand new update for SDSGC, the 24, the 324 update. God, I can't fucking talk. We got Green Merlin coming with this new update and a whole bunch of other stuff. Stuff I'm, that's pretty cool, some other stuff that I'm not super happy about, but, you know, it is what it is. Or, you know, I shouldn't say not happy about, but just things that I don't quite care about. Don't, I guess, don't affect me. We're going to start off with the uh, kind of just the overview here that says we're going to get the green Merlin after the maintenance tonight. So that should be exciting for people that want to pull on her. She's actually going to be the better of the Merlins. This is the one that I was waiting for saying uh, people that want to pull on red Merlin, or at least I was saying on stream, that wanted to pull on red Merlin. You should just wait for this one because this one is actually able to, you know, be used in a lot of content. Not just a little bit. We got some new events we'll take a look at, some new bun- a fucking lot of bundles. Man, they, they, they just went fucking all out with these bundles. Chat system changes. So real quick, just to go over these, they're going to change UI, they're going to add in a global chat. They're going to be able to talk to your knighthood you've joined through the activated bottom left icon. What? I don't know what that means, but we already have knighthood chat, so. And boom, they're going to add in deathmatch and friendly match chat, able to chat in waiting screens for friendly match. And deathmatch. Now the big thing that's important for me is some people that aren't aware there's actually like a little system in the game like the sticker system that we have right now. Over in JP you can actually use stickers and then you can use phrases that you type in so that way you can type in like I have freeze, I have go through rank up, I have a buff. You don't just have to use the icons there's actually like text things which is a little easier. They're less cute but it's a, it's a lot easier and a lot more efficient to actually communicate with people randomly over the internet. We're doing a whole lot of UI changes, you're going to see that with a lot of these patches, but they're changing some UI in the Knighthood, they're going to add in last week's personal rank, so that's dope. Hard difficulty for the boss, so if you already are familiar with the guild boss, you're going to add in the hard difficulty, so probably uh, another bit of score for you to get for you and your guild. And personal rewards, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I wasn't very familiar with the guild system over in the JP side, so this is going to be interesting to see all these Knighthood changes, but there's a lot of them. So you're going to be able to register a team for your guild so that way when they're, you know, into the list, when you're picking out support units, you're actually going to have, uh, you know, catered units that you can actually pick out for. You're going to add separate rankings for team and accounts. Interesting, interesting there. You're going to be able to see your CP among your fellow Knighthood members so everybody can flex their EP. In. You're going to be able to see, I'm going to guess this is like total CP against all Knighthoods, so then it's going to be even more EP. In. All right, and this one's worded super weird, but able to set the desired awaken perk and stat range, able to set the amount of currency to be consumed, anvils and diamonds, able to set limitations on the continuous change amount. Basically what this cryptic language is telling you is that we're going to get auto rolling for the substats and your gear, so now you can go ahead and just like how we have the auto upgrade function, we're not going to have the auto reroll. So you can pick like a stat range that you want, a specific stat you want, and it'll just continuously reroll on its own until it hits that range that you picked out for it. And this one's neat. I honestly had no idea about this. I guess I didn't really pay attention until somebody brought it up that the uh, the healing Elizabeths here actually don't have any weapon costumes, which is a little, uh, I mean, not too rough, but it gives them like, you know, a little worse edge compared to everybody else who does have them. So we're actually going to get some new weapon costumes. And I believe they said that one of these are going to be free. Normal weapon costumes will be given for free if you already have these heroes. So cool. I don't know what that means. Maybe we're just getting the blue sapphire ring or just like some kind of weapon skin. I don't know. I don't know, but cool. Also, I think this is a typo. I'm pretty sure this is Red Elizabeth, Red SR Elizabeth, not the green Ellie Hawk, so weird. And then kind of the big part of this update slash not that big is going to be all of these different buffs that they had. I believe that all of these are going to be buffs here, but uh, for the most part, there's a lot of like weaker units that nobody uses that are going to get like small buffs or slightly better buffs than the other units that you're going to see. Like we have the SSR Hauser here. He's going to get like just the most minimal buffs here. If we're, we're going to look just for cap level here. He's going to get a bonus, what is that, 4 defense, <laughs> he's going to get a bonus 4 defense and roughly 200, 225 HP, so yeah, the buffs for like the actual units that matter for the most part are pretty whack, I'm only going to go over the ones that I think that are even remotely interesting. First and foremost are the two SR Housers right here, they're both going to get an additional 15% pierce rate, now this does boost up their stats quite a bit, 15% pierce rate is nothing to scoff at, but the issue is is that these that doesn't make these units great now, they're still mediocre and they can only fit into certain bits of content, like one of these Housers, I don't remember which is which, but one of these Housers is like an okay farmer, but he falls short when it comes to other units like Weinheit and others, like Weinheit's passive is just giving everybody pierce rate, so I mean, just, just weird, weird buffs in general. 
I don't think the Grimoire buffs make him any better. Hendrickson, I believe, yeah, Hendrickson here, he's going to get some pretty substantial buffs here, mostly just his HP, so he's going to get, it looks like about 2k at SR, but as you get up to UR, the, bu the boost is only about, let's see here, about 800 HP. Like, that's okay, but that still doesn't make Hendrickson very viable. And then down here, a little, a little more important buffs. I'm going to start with the SSR Slater, the Blue Slater, the most important one. Because he is an absolute beast in uh, Red Demon, and he's uh, I've seen him in some some PvP teams, and he, he does some a little bit of work. He's going to get, once again, very unsubstantial. Eight attack, actually, yeah, eight attack, eight attack buff at SSR. I don't know if this actually scales down when it gets to UR, so it's actually not going to be changed at UR. But at least it's eight more attack at SSR. He's going to get six defense, and I'll look down here. He's going to get 120 defense. This, is, this one's actually pretty good. 120 defense buff is not bad. And then his HP is literally buffed by 1k to 1.2k. That's okay. That's not bad. Those are some pretty decent defensive buffs for Slater. Most likely to help combat against like this Jericho meta going on right now. So everybody's running Jericho. This gives him just the smallest bit of a chance to survive against her. But overall, this isn't really going to uh, make him a whole lot better. But cool. He's going to perform a little better. And then the bigger one is uh, going to be the Red Slater. Now the Red Slater kind of has the same idea as the Blue Slater. He's going to crit. He's going to do plenty of damage. The problem is he's going to have lower base stats in general, and he's going to be red. So he's going to cover a different element, you know, for what that matters for. Hung over Dachi from the future here, and I just wanted to, to throw this in here real quick because I was pretty sure I was misremembering uh, the red SR Slayer. Just to go over real quick, his S1 is going to have life steal as well as some damage single target, and then his second skill is going to be a straight debuff that decreases attack related stats. That scales up the higher rank it goes to. And it does disable or seal every type of attack except for attack related skills so he can seal you know green bonds debuff he can seal uh gill thunders buff he can seal everything except for you know the uh the regular just straight up attacks without any kind of debuffs and then his passive this is the one i was thinking of that was like oh he crits uh decreases all enemies crit resistance by the value of the hero's crit chance at the start of the battle so i just want to correct myself in case everything else i say is irrelevant going forward thank you and then the only thing I find relevant is going to be the UR, because it's just defense and HP changing here. He's going to get also 120 defense, and then looks like about one, about 1500, 1600 HP. That's pretty good. But the big one here is going to be going from 30% pierce rate to 50%, and then resistance at 30% going up to 50%. That's, that's huge, nothing to scoff at. Really makes him just an absolute beast. But overall, I would say if you have blue Slater over red Slater, I would probably just go for the blue Slater instead. So, those are some uh, pretty neat buffs. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, fucked up my hand. I, I, I don't have bandages, so I use tape, and now I'm just, like, holding it here. Send help. All right, they're moving. They're doing some custom UI changes, so nothing really crazy there. Hero's Way achievements UI changes, so specifically for Hero's Way, I'm guessing? I don't know. Some achievement UI changes, basically. Added a thousand combat class. God, they got me saying it. 1,000 CP when using a combined attack hero team, so the units that actually have the, uh... So I don't know if this applies just to the units that actually get some different specials when they're paired up with a different, with a specific subunit, or the ones that actually have the little infinity linking sign that also give them a, a slightly higher boost. I, I think this is just for the ones that actually get ult changes, but cool. They're going to have more CP, so that's actually going to reflect a bit better when it comes to specifically PvP. And they said added the ability to toggle the ultimate move display during battle, so I think there's going to be some option actually, so you can actually click something rather than in the menu. I, I, and this one's weird, because I kind of like looking at these banners sometimes whenever I'm making a video or something like that, but if you do not have a ticket that corresponds with a certain banner, basically that banner's not going to show up anymore. So their example is if you do not have the 1 SSR guaranteed, you're not going to see that 1 SSR guaranteed banner anymore. Alright, that about covers all of that. Now we're going to get into all the events and bundles and stuff they actually do have, and it's, it's a lot of posts here, so we're going to try and burn through this as quickly as possible, and then uh, Merlin overview will be at the end. So basically, after maintenance ends, we're going to get this new event trio of Troublemakers, and essentially this is going to be like other event quests we've had. We're going to get some cups here, which are fucking amazing, fantastic, I absolutely love this, this is great, and we're going to get some gold chests. And there's probably going to be some kind of a, a boosted or like semi-boosted drop rate on these, and I feel that this is probably going to be limited entries just like we've had the other events, so take advantage of these because cups are huge. And then clearing these stages, we're also going to get the big boy XP pot, so super cool here. Alright, next is this Pick SSR Equipment Bundle. This is 100% uh, whale bait, in my opinion. Uh, you get to select six pieces of gear, all SSR. You're going to get some diamonds and some trash stones. And you're actually going to be able to pick out your sets right here. 
and you can pick out which piece of gear you want. As you can see, all of the stats are going to be at random, so whatever the base stat is completely random. This is kind of uh, whatever, because you can farm every one of these sets right here. None of these are the PvP exclusive sets. So this is 100% whale bait, especially for newer players. Otherwise, this is pretty much a garbage bundle right here. This is 100% skip. They got a social media event going on, so they're probably going to have something that you can share some way. Share on social media through the event screen. Yeah, so there's going to be an event. It's going to be like, oh, click here, and you can share, you know, play play Seven Deadly Sins right now through whatever social media. It's going to be Twitter, or Facebook, whatever. And you're going to get one event dungeon key. I believe this is going to be daily. Yes, this is going to be daily. Now, I mean, just, just a little secret, a little tip for people. There are a few ways that a lot of games do this. There's one where they just make you go into the app, and then, like, as soon as you back out of it, they'll just give it to you. You don't even need to post it. You just need to actually switch over to the app, and then, boom, you got it. The second way is where they make you post it. Now, I'm going to tell you the secret right here. Just make that post private, and then it doesn't even matter anymore. You're not spamming people, losing your friends' respect, and all that jazz, so. All right, and they added these, like, tiers of bundles that are unlocked based on what chapter that you have gotten into. Now, depending on the price, these are pretty OP. Basically, there are tiers of bundles that you can get, and you're going to get equipment awakening materials. This is a way for whales to kind of just skip the entire process and just get all this stuff for free. Overall, I think this bundle is like really high value and one of the better bundles to get, but I, I don't know, I don't like this big separation of whales and free-to-play. As, as they get further and further into PvP, and they're at the top echelon. I'll care less, but right now I'm like, man. Alright, and this one's a little more of a traditional gacha event here. It's where you're going to be able to farm in Fort Solgress. So this is going to be your, you know, your books, your XP pots, those those types of quests in there, your, uh, your pendant dungeons, all that. They're going to give you a ticket for clearing these, and then you're going to be able to trade in those tickets to get all of these materials. And I'll show you the limit right here, and I believe how many tickets it's actually going to cost. And this is, this is just... This is just great. This is, <laughs> this is just fantastic. You're going to get some gold stones, you're going to get some wings if you're, you know, not quite raiding as much as other people. You're going to get cups, you're going to get SSR pendants, SSR pendants. Oh my god, it's all here. This this event's fantastic. Oh, and side note, you can only acquire a max of 50 tickets per day, so you can't just burn this all out in one day, unfortunately. Alright, in this part of the event, it's actually going to show you a bunch of these kind of daily quests that we're going to be getting for these set periods of time. And you can see the conditions as well as the rewards. The rewards are actually down here. You, I don't know why they just show the diamonds there and then they show these down here, but you can get some awakening stones, some diamonds, and some potions. All good stuff. You're going to get half off Fort Solgris, so that means farm all of the, uh, the gold, the books, all that uh, XP potions, all that good stuff. All right, last bit before we finally get into the fucking Bay Merlin. We have this oh, full awaken right here, and this is mostly a quality of life thing for whales here. It's just going to let you go ahead and just jump straight up to like max awakening if you already have all the materials ready and then just in one button. All right, and finally we have Bay Merlin. Green Merlin that is, who's going to be, in my opinion, superior to the Red Merlin, but at the same time they also kind of cover different roles entirely. And I don't know what is wrong with Netmarble. Why are you using the blurriest jet? Oh, what the hell? It just popped up over there. It is using the blurriest JPEG right here just to... Ah, it's, it's ugly. It's hideous. Due to circumstances, I'm short in time, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to compare her to somebody else who kind of covers a similar role, but at, at the same time, she kind of is going to cover her own role, and I'm going to compare her to a few other units that you might be familiar with, but we have Green Merlin here. So starting off with her skill 1, now if you're familiar with the story bond, which I feel like a lot of people should be because that is a lot of people's uh, budget entry level team into gearless PvP, red bond is a lot of, uh, you're going to see him on a lot of teams when it comes to the lower ranks of PvP. That is because his one skill, he gets to deplete one ult gauge, and same here for Merlin, depleting one ult gauge on just a rank 1 attack. Rank 2 is just going to boost that attack, and then rank 3 is going to deplete 3 ultimate, and it's going to, of course, boost some more damage. So, pretty much just taken straight out of Red Bond's kit, and it's an amazing ability. It's kind of just what makes Red Bond really good as far as PvP goes, and she has that. And then the other part that's going to make her fantastic when it goes into a lot of content is both going to be PvP, PvE, not really, but this ability right here is going to really help cover for people who don't run Ellie, and you happen to get her, as well as getting this, uh, it's, it's just great, it's just great. This is perfect cube, it's going to create a barrier around all allies equal to 150% of attack for two turns. So this is essentially just a temporary heal. In essence, one team could go ahead and run an Ellie, so that way you can heal, and then you can have someone running Merlin on the other end, and that way she can just top off, keep those barriers up, and you're pretty much smooth sailing for extremes there. The great thing about this as well, especially when it comes to something like PvP, is you don't have to rely on your health actually dropping low. You can just go ahead and top up and keep these barriers up, 
and this is going to make it a huge pain for your enemies over in PvP. This is going to be for both Gearless and Geared, as this does scale with her attack, so it's just going to get more and more devastating depending on whether or not you decide to take her into Geared or Gearless. And her ult here is going to be the same. The, a lot of characters are going to share a lot of the same abilities if they're like kind of like from the same arc in essence, but it's going to do a bunch of damage and it's going to seal attack skills for two turns. And then the combo with the Arthurs is just going to boost that attack. Not any change with the debuff there. And to finally wrap up her whole package, her passive is also an absolute banger when it comes to PvP and once again Ray Demon. Those are kind of our two big things, but I mean those are really great pieces of content to be covering right now. This is going to fill the ult gauge of all allies by one orb at the start of battle. Now it doesn't sound that insane, but especially if you've run into this in PvP, some people can take some ult food, which means that they're actually going to get an extra orb at the start of the battle and you pair that with Merlin. Some teams are actually going to have two orbs at the start of battle, and if they go second and they have both this Merlin passive and the uh, the ult orb food, you're gonna have three orbs. So pretty great passive. Also, of course, gonna synergize really well if you're running an Ellie on another team, and then taking in Merlin when it comes to Grey Demon, everybody's gonna be able to pop out those ults a lot faster. You're gonna take down the boss a whole lot quicker. And yeah, that wraps up pretty much all of this update as well as the Merlin banner. I think that she's actually absolutely worth pulling, especially if you skip the Bond banner, you know, you're waiting for the next good unit. She's perfect. You can take her into Grey. You can take her into PvP. You can take her anywhere. Take her out on a date. All right, just wanted to say uh, I'm super grateful, everybody who watches. I hope you enjoyed. Hope this helped out a little bit. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.